yeah, I might, I might have some issues with uh, Tesla here. See, I have an open mind, and I can discuss uh, Tesla whether it's good or bad. And uh, I'm just going to be straightforward and tell you my observations. But first, let's look at the chart. This is Mike, the tactical stock scalper. All right, all right. So uh, we had a great dynamic move. We gapped up uh, when we got good numbers uh, pre-market today. And now uh, SPY is bumping its head up against major resistance, which is the 450 level. Uh, what we had here, and we talked about this last Wednesday and Thursday, was uh, where are we going to get a pullback, or is this period here just a correction through time? We needed to see a dynamic move up or down to prove that, and that is what we got. We had no pullback here. This is just a correction through time. And I told you that was a possibility, I believe, in my Thursday video, to be prepared that we may not even get a pullback. And uh, we sure did not. This thing has ripped up to 450. Now, we will get a pullback. It's inevitable. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when. We can keep expecting a pullback. People can keep going short in the market and keep buying puts and keep selling puts in the market and selling calls and all that. And all the market does is eat it up, add fuel to the fire with a few buyers, and it keeps going on. Pretty incredible. Now on the downside, I will say, look at this. We got this huge gap to fill there. Gap to fill there. And a gap to fill down there. We have filled this gap this week from way back in September. So will we come back down and fill these gaps automatically? Well, you know, the, the first likely place now to for SPY to come back down and test would be the gap fill at 440. You can almost expect that when a pullback happens, that that'll be a spot of support. And that's a probably very likely spot for SPY to go to when it starts pulling back. Pretty interesting and fascinating going on here. 450, as you see, has been major resistance. 450, we have sold off there numerous times. Will we keep going up and just eating the shorts for dinner and a market continue to rip up? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I still got money on the sideline, still waiting for an eventual pullback. That will come. Let's go to the queues. Great dynamic move from the queues. It didn't even mess with major resistance. Look, I was talking about yesterday, 380 is major resistance. It could possibly butt its head there. What did the markets do? It didn't even care. It gapped up pre-market. Didn't even mess with that resistance. It just took off from there. It didn't even come back and test it. It's like, no, nope, we're gone. So the queues just ripped up. Uh, again, we got gaps to fill to the downside. Uh, so when the pullback comes, we're looking for it to get around 380, maybe even a tad lower to fill that gap on a pullback when it comes. Again, queues a little bit more dynamic with its movement than SPY. We had a correction through time here between the 370 and 375 level, as you see, for a few days. Looking for a dynamic move. We got the dynamic move. We just didn't know which way it was going to go, and it went up. And it's uh, quite impressive to see it. Look at IWM and, and how gorgeous IWM is. Matter of fact, out of all my, um, out of Tesla and IWM, QQQY and JEPY, IWM has moved the best thus far with those options. What does that mean for options payment and disbursements? I don't know. We'll have to wait till they come out. So we just had a, another dynamic move in the market. IWM um, was uh, just rocketed up. It gapped up, got above the 50-period moving average. Through intraday trading, got above the 100-period moving average, looking like it may want to try to fill this gap way back there at 180 on deck. We'll have to see what happens. And, I mean, what signals is giving us, right? So IWM, the market was going up, okay, and uh, IWM was coming down, telling us there was a pullback going to happen. That pullback never happened. It was a correction through time. Markets went down for one day or started to go down for one day. What did IWM do? It ripped up down here. And then the next day, and then it held steady there, and then we gapped up. IWM is pretty impressive if you look at it and know how to trade it as an instrument. Look at this just amazing range ran right here, right? So... Since this time period, you know, in June of 2022, 
all the way to now, it has been in an incredible trading range. Just think about how much money you could have made if every time IWM went to 165 to 170, right? Right in there. And you went long, whether you bought shares or went calls, and then you sold those around 190, 200, and then flipped the script and went short and went puts. I mean, it would have been incredible. You may have never had to trade or buy anything else in the market. Pretty incredible. IWM still maintains itself in this trading range. Loving it. So good, Tesla. So excited for Tesla as a, as a stock right now. I see some really good things. So we've been talking about is this a higher low that Tesla has been forming uh, yesterday? You know, we formed it the other day. Then yesterday we, we were talking about it saying, yeah, you know, it's possible confirmation. We just need, a, you know, a bigger move above 230. And what did we get here? Gap up above 230. And what the beautiful thing about Tesla right now is it came back down to 230. Didn't break it. Tested it. Ripped up. Pretty, pretty awesome. Um, used 230 as support and just went up there. Now we're closing the gap here. See that gap from, from earnings? I mean, imagine. I mean, it's almost about to fill the gap from that horrible earnings. Pretty impressive. A dynamic move from, you know, under 200, almost up to 240. Well, I mean, Tesla should look something similar. I mean, we know we have the upside capped. I mean, we, we know it's not going to move as much as Tesla. How close are we to filling this earnings gap down? Oh, oh, not even close. I mean, <laughs> not even a sniff, not even 50%. It's uh, interesting uh, for me to watch this play out. Tesla still fits into my plans currently. I only have 200 shares. I'm just testing it out over the next four to five months. I wanted to see how Tesla would act in an uptrend, right? Because I've been, ever since I bought Tesla way back here, it's been in a downtrend because Tesla has been in a downtrend. I couldn't wait. I was excited. Couldn't wait to see what Tesla would do during an uptrend. I know, I know it's capped, but I know we're going to capture some of that upside move in addition to getting the wonderful disbursements. And what do we have? Wah, wah, wah. I mean, it, not even close. Not, so I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if it's a, the options that they're playing, the fund in general. I don't have an answer as to why it crawls so slow. QQQY and JEPY seem to be moving better on the upside and all they do is sell puts, right? How is that even possible? Um, wow. So, uh, yeah, I'm a little, uh, little, little dismayed at this, a little confused and wondering how can it not have these kind of dynamic moves that it had earlier in its history? Still part of my plan. Still going to watch it. Still testing it out. We'll just have to see. I just want to put this out there that uh, I think it's quite fascinating uh, that the movement isn't what I expected, even with a capped upside. Hope you enjoyed the content. This is Mike, Tactical Stock Scalper.